guys, Jeremy, Dragon's, Bo Dragon's Breath Glassworks. Uh, we're finishing up another day of production here, and I wanted to take a moment to talk to you about um, something that all of us really need to know how to make if we're doing sort of the uh, craft show scene, and that's pumpkins. Uh, I'm sure most of you have tried pumpkins, and probably made a lot of them. Um, for me, what I wish I'd known 15 years ago when it first started is time is money. Uh, you need to make them as fast as possible, but still looking really nice. And I've gotten it down pretty well. I can make a good sized pumpkin in one heat after the uh, initial second gather. So uh, I'm going to show you a real quick, simple method for making pumpkins. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about our optic molds that we have here and the ones that I use. Um, so the one that a lot of you are probably familiar with are these lobe molds or flower molds. This one is a six point. I almost never use it. It's there. I use it occasionally, but very rarely. This is a 16 point optic mold. Um, I use these for stems. I do a lot of optic patterns on pieces, but I use these mostly for stems, for pumpkins. Uh, and this is my real workhorse. This is the uh, 12 point ridge mold. Uh, these are all Steiner molds. Um, but I want to show you the ones that I work with. These two are open bottom. Uh, the low mold is a closed bottom mold. So with that out of the way, show you how I make my pumpkin. Now, go in, gather my first gather of glass. And I immediately go into the color. I don't really care if I've wasted a little color on the boil. Uh, the amount of pennies that I lose from losing some color on the boil is minimal compared to the extra time it would take to prep and shape things. Uh, to make sure that that doesn't happen. And with these, I don't really care about fully melting into the color. These are going to be uh, coated a second time. So, with a second gather, so if they're a little lumpy here, it doesn't really matter. In fact, it can actually add to the design. So, give it a quick puff. Honestly, don't care what the, the shape of the starter bubble is like. While it's very important to learn how to make starter bubbles properly, um, that's in air quotes for you, because properly really depends on what you're making. Uh, on pumpkins, for me, it doesn't really matter what the shape it is. I will do a variety of things to cool this down quicker. Uh, I'm often impatient with letting the starter bubble cool down before my second gather. Um, I'll often hit it with compressed air or hold it in front of the fan. I've even known, been known to dunk it in a bucket of water to speed the cooling process. I've been working all day, so my furnace is cooling off, that glass level is getting low, so it's not all that hot to start with. So I really just have to wait a moment. Let's go back into the furnace. gather up my second gather of glass. I don't want to make a giant pumpkin, so I'm going to let some of that drip back into the furnace. A lot of people block. I really prefer paper. Um, I rarely use my blocks. I like a really wet paper. Um, again, it's personal preference. So, there's our basic shape. I just want to sort of a tapered down bullet shape. One real fast repeat. And for this, since I use my furnace as a repeating chamber as well, uh, I'm going to hold this right in front of that burner head, letting it get really hot, and then I'm going to head over to my ridge mold and put in the texture. And this is where we have to be fast. So, add that in. I'm pulling up while I'm blowing. That's stretching the neck, stretching the form, but really keeping nice tight bridges. I work alone most of the time, so I'm adding a hose so I can inflate while I shape the tools. Squeezing down the jack line first a little bit, then the bottom while inflating. This little nub that I'm squeezing down here is where there's no texture in that coming together. Squeeze 
them down further while inflating. That sawing motion is not good for your jacks, but these are my student jacks. They're not my nice jacks. I don't use my nice jacks to make fun. There's a little sharp burr on the bottom right there where I cut it. I just want to give that a real quick torch to get the sharpness away. Inflating while pushing in. And then it's going to remove the pumpkin. From the bottom. Now, the size of my uh, opening at the top varies wildly from day to day, really depending on how much the glass was on that second gather. This is a really large opening, way larger than I typically like, so I'm going to get extra glass to make sure it's properly covered. Now, I usually make my pumpkin stems with powder for my cutting. Uh, I work outdoors and I've always got a fan blowing away from me, uh, behind me, when I'm working with powder. That way if I kick any of it up, it blows away and no problem. Now, back into the mold. This time I'm going to use that sharper optic. I'm going to chill the bottom of that stem. This is still the gather heat on the pumpkin stem sort of stripped itself off the pipe a little bit. There we go. And I like really wild, curly stems. I like to wrap that around the body. Uh, I find, for me, it's important to keep those stems real close to the body. Uh, they travel better that way less likely to break in shipping as well. Just torching off that cut mark. Sometimes I'll go back through and, and torch the individual loops where they're touching the body of the pumpkin. That will help make sure that they stay um, fused a little better. Uh, that stem is still got enough heat in it that I can just grab it with the pipe grabber on my diamond shears to put it away. So into the box it goes. wait till tomorrow morning. Uh, my personal favorite mold for making pumpkins is this ridge mold. Uh, if you've got a favorite, let me know. If you've got a different way you make your pumpkins or you'd like a different style of stem, tell us in the comments. Thanks guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you are able to use some of those techniques. Have a wonderful day.